All right, all right, all right. Yeah, guy you just heard there, Academy Award winning actor Matthew McConaughey. Hardly anybody out there bleeds more burnt orange than that guy. And uh, But I'm sure, you know, after the OU Texas game that we witnessed on Saturday, October 14, 2017, uh, Matt can't be feeling um, his best right now. Although I will say this, though. Texas Longhorns, after being down 20 to nothing, you know, about five minutes left to go before halftime, and at the end of that first quarter, having only 19 total yards, and OU had over 220 at the end of that first quarter, and the Sooners had 11 of the 15 minutes of time of possession. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be remnants of some of those OU Texas blowouts from you know, 2000, 2003, 2011, 2012. But Texas wasn't going to let that happen. I will say this, the Longhorns played with plenty of this. That's why it's a damn heart. And they played with a lot of it. But give the Sooners credit, too, for playing hard in the final minutes of the game when they needed it the most. The Sooners blow a 20-point lead. Are you, are you kidding me? And at one point, that's right, it was 24-23 UT with just a few minutes left to go and the Texas side of the Cotton Bowl crowd at a fever pitch. But you know, Baker Mayfield finding a wide-open Mark Andrews. I mean, nobody was even near him for the easy 57-yard touchdown. That proved to be the game winner. But um, if you watch this game, you might be thinking to yourself one thing. Did we already see this kind of game from the week before? And again, you, you hate to keep mentioning Iowa State because – it is such a bad memory, but let's face it, the, the games are almost identical. Oh, you get off to a big lead in both of them, and then we see the opposition chip away, which, of course, in the case of today was Texas, and we see them chip away at that lead um, and play with a lot of heart, and we see Oklahoma you know, blowing some coverages, missing tackles, and committing stupid penalties. But in today's case, they committed dump penalties on both sides of the ball in that second half. Not taking anything away, Texas, but the Sooners were not playing disciplined football in that second half. Big factor in what led to what could have been a come-from-behind Texas victory. But again, the first quarter, Baker Mayfield and company made things count. And Baker Mayfield made things count because OU's rushing attack was doing a lot of the work. I mean, most of that first half was the Oklahoma offensive line opening the holes for both Trey Sermon, who again played just absolutely amazing, and we saw more Rodney Anderson than we've seen in a while. In fact, ever, as far as an Oklahoma Sooner running back, he got more touches and he made them count, got himself a touchdown in the second quarter with some nice cutback moves. I mean, it looked so easy for the Sooners in the first 25 minutes of this game, and I'm sure Texas didn't know what the heck hit them, but Tom Herman's squad Again, they battle back, and we saw a quarterback for Texas that if they don't start him for the rest of the season, the Longhorns are crazy. I mean, I know you got an experienced quarterback in Shane Bouchelle who seemed to be the future for this team, but Ellinger brings more of that run element to this Texas team. We know this because Texas had no ground game. That's one of the biggest reasons why they fell behind so early because their leading running back ball carrier only had nine yards. Only nine yards for the game. Ellinger had over 100 yards rushing. He was 85 to 90 percent of Texas's rushing attack. And you've you noticed that Ellinger's passing is coming along too. He's more of the complete quarterback, and he is one tough son of a gun. He'll lay a lick on you too when he runs with the football. So I think if Tom Herman goes back to Shane Bouchelle, he's crazy because Ellinger is more, like I said, of the complete quarterback. And by the way, just a freshman too. Bouchelle's a sophomore, so. You can heavily invest in Ellinger for now and for seasons to come. I thought he was brilliant in a losing cause. But um, to me, the turning point in this game, as far as the game getting out of um, Oklahoma's momentum corner, it wasn't when Texas scored that first touchdown, okay, when it was 20-7 uh, to 7 Sooners. It happened just a few plays after that. In the final minute of the first half, Oklahoma threatening, Fourth and three from, I think, the Longhorn 31-yard line. Baker Mayfield throws his first interception of the season. John Bonney, the Texas defensive back, read that play like a book and cut in front of the pass, got the pick, and it only took Texas a few seconds to march the ball downfield against a center defense. I thought, for the most part in that first half, couldn't have played any better. And, by the way, speaking of that first half of the OU defense, 
At times, they were getting to Ellinger with only a three-man rush. But we saw them go to a four-man rush on a frequent basis, which we had not seen um, during the entire season. The Syria defense was effective for the most part in the first half, but they did give up a field goal in the final minute of the second quarter, which made it 20-10 to 10 Sooners. And then other than that opening drive, which led to a Sooner field goal to make it 23-10, to 10, OU's offense went into an absolute funk as Texas got very nasty against the run. And that's what Texas had to do. The Longhorns had to get nasty against that Sooner run in the second half to try to make Baker Mayfield do more than maybe – uh, Lincoln Riley was accustomed to him needing to do. In other words, I think OU really wanted to keep that ground game going, but again, Texas committed more to the run. And in the second half, other than that final touchdown that Mark Andrews scored off of that pass from Baker Mayfield, the Texas defense really controlled that second half. In fact, the time of possession flip-flopped in that second half in favor of Texas. Now, was this a pretty game for the Oklahoma defense? I thought for the first 20, 25 minutes it was, and then, you know, they had their struggles after that. There was one play I remember in the fourth quarter where Texas goes deep, okay? And it was a wide-open Duvernay for the Longhorns, and Parnell Motley got about 10, maybe even 15 yards behind. And thankfully for the Sooners, Duvernay's momentum took him out of bounds. Otherwise, it's 24-23 Longhorns at that point. This was a drive, though, and even though it was a completion for a good 40 yards, this was a drive in which Tom Herman decided to roll the dice and go for it on fourth down and manageable from the Sooner 26. Now, a lot of teams in that situation, especially with the game that close and plenty of time left, would have attempted the field goal. Herman decided to go for it. Caleb Kelly, the Sooner linebacker, providing enough pressure to force an incompletion. No points for Texas on that drive turnover on downs. The only justification you might have for Tom Herman in that case was the week before, you know, near the end of regulation in the game tied, Texas missed a field goal from about the same distance. And even though Texas won the game in overtime against the Wildcats, they couldn't wrap it up in regulation. And I'm sure Herman probably thought, you know what, I'm going to get second guess big time if I go for the field goal and if um, the field goal kicker misses it, considering that the momentum was on Texas' side at that point. Herman decided to go with the momentum, but in that case it backfired. And... When you look at the center defense, um, yeah, it wasn't always pretty, but they had big plays at the right times, something that didn't happen against the Cyclones the week before, and it made it count, including a huge DJ Ward sack when, again, Texas was threatening on their last legitimate shot at trying to win the game. Um, you know, the, the center defense, I know Mike Stoops has been criticized you know, big time, but today, even though the defense – you know, bended some in the second half and even broke a time or two. They definitely had this near the end of the game. Yep, that heart. And it enabled the Sooners to pull out a, a, a close game, 29-24. And should we be surprised that this was this was a close game? I thought, you know, it'd be 35-24. I got the Texas part right, 24, um, so not bad. Of course, OU ended up with uh, 29 points. And, you know, for the, what, fourth straight year, this game decided by seven points or fewer. That's what rivalries can do sometimes. It can come down to the nitty-gritty to the end. But thankfully, the good guys uh, pull it off. And um, a bit of irony here before we wrap it up. Of course, University of Texas located in Austin. The two starting quarterbacks today both played their high school ball in Austin. Of course, um, Ellinger played at Austin-Westlake. And Baker Mayfield played at a rival of Austin Westlake, says Austin Lake Travis. And speaking of Austin, a guy that's not from Austin, but his name is Austin. Austin Seibert, maybe one of the unsung heroes of this game. His punting today was absolutely big time, both distance-wise and hang time-wise. And on kickoffs, which he handles as well, I think he booted every kick out of the end zone except for one, which, of course, led to Texas's first touchdown. But other than that, um, the kickoffs were terrific. And field goal-wise, which I, you know, you know, shoot him out a little bit last week in the Iowa State postgame, today a perfect three for three. So even though the Sooners couldn't capitalize on the red zone all the time with touchdown um, emptiness, they were still able to at least get three out of those possessions, which 
turned out to be a big factor in the game as Seibert was a perfect three for three. So, you know, Austin Seibert, you know, good job. Way to bounce back. So the second half of the college football season begins next Saturday. Kickoff time for Oklahoma, Kansas State from Manhattan. Still has not been announced in case you missed it. Well, there's no question Kansas State misses the quarterback, Jesse Ertz, who got hurt last week against Texas. Um, his omission was very much noted as TCU um, held Kansas State to virtually no offense in the Horned Frogs convincing win. By the way, TCU still undefeated. Up next for the Texas Longhorns, by the way, a home game against Oklahoma State. Yeah, Texas, good luck with that. Speaking of the rest of the season, boy, I'm telling you what, who knows how this, how the rest of 2017 is going to unfold. I mean, I'm going to admit, I, mean, I thought that any shot that Oklahoma had in the college football playoff was impossible because of the loss to Iowa State, the magnitude of it. I thought it's going to be pretty much impossible for the Sooners to even get back into the mix no matter what. Um, it's still going to be difficult for the Sooners to get there, but there very well could be a path now. We know this because four of the top ten lost this past weekend. We're talking about Clemson, number two in the country. They go down. Number five, Washington. They lose to Arizona State. Washington State gets thumped, and I mean thumped, by Cal. And then Auburn, well, you know what? We're talking about Oklahoma blowing the 20-point lead today, but at least the Sooners were still able to win. Not the case with Auburn. Their 20-point lead history at LSU, in the end, pulls off the upset victory. So, um, the Sooners very well are going to see a change in the polls come Sunday and a positive one, too. But, again, it sounds cliche, but if you don't take it one game at a time, it ain't going to matter what the polls say because you're going to be out of it and another loss will loom. Sooners cannot take Kansas State lightly. Kansas State still plays good defense and got to play on the road. Um, so the Sooners, you know, be happy you beat Texas. Winning beats losing any day of the week. But come Monday, come time for practice, you got to focus on the Wildcats and then five other games after that when you approach them. One game at a time, that has to be the approach for the Sooners to get back into the mix. And for the Sooners today, they almost blew it. And again, give Texas credit for not laying down. But the Sooners... In the fourth quarter, find a way to win after nearly blowing the game. But you know something? They get the W, and that's all I give a damn about. 29-24, Sooners win. And make sure to join me in a few days for my weekly matchup show as we preview the Sooners against Kansas State. It was one heck of a Red River showdown. Sooners prevail. Boomer Sooner. All right, all right, all right.